Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Doing a little spring preview on the Colorado Buffaloes. Coach Prime taking over. We've covered a lot of the transfer news and a lot of the recruiting news for Colorado. Haven't quite talked about how this roster has actually been constructed. Taking a look at not only the star players that they've added in the portal, but how does the depth look? Taking a look at it now. And we'll be back April 22nd to break down the spring game. Sold out on ESPN. I think the coolest part about this Coach Prime story is regardless of what the product is on the field, and you're feeling pretty optimistic that it's going to be pretty solid, the hype around this program is absolutely next level. We enjoy talking it a lot. I mean, 12 months ago, we're not talking Colorado football that much. We're talking a lot of Colorado football recently. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. One of the coolest stories in sport, and we just really do appreciate it. All the support you guys have shown, so if you do enjoy it, lock in. Dill, I'm going to kick it off to you. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, this is where a lot of new faces come in. Kick us off here. I mean, at the end of the day, I think Colorado is going to go with Shador Sanders. And yeah. You, you yeah. see you. Quarterbacks are, I mean, NFL, college, high school, they're the most important position typically, and, and that, that should be no different for this Colorado team because you got a team that – you look, there's a lot of orange on that list that a lot of new faces, a lot of transfers, a lot of guys who, again, haven't really necessarily been at this Colorado program. So it, it's it's new, and, and who's going to bring it together? It's Shador, and I'm sure that's how Coach Prime and Shador want it. They are, probably want the ball in their hands. They want the the bright lights on them and, and on Shador, I should say, and, and that's exactly, I think, what they have. And that's where I think this story starts off when it is how does how does Shadur Sanders look and can he be like the Caleb Williams for USC, right? Uh, you it's actually very very funny to look at how similar this transition's been. Like Lincoln Riley takes a job at USC, injects this team that just lacked a roster, lacked depth. The cupboards were bare and just adds a ton of guys to the portal. Coach Prime, the cupboards were not necessarily bare, but with talent, yeah, they were pretty bare. I mean, this team was one and eleven one of the worst FBS teams in the country last year. And he's just putting in so many new faces. But similar to how Caleb Williams was able to take USC as far as they did, I think Colorado is going to be very reliant on Shadir Sanders. And I can't wait to see how he looks. I mean, dominated at, at Jackson State. This is a couple steps up from competition, but you watch you watch Shadir Sanders. You see the special arm talent. You see how he processes the field. You feel pretty good about that. What I'm a little bit more concerned on, is not necessarily Shadir Sanders. I think he's a, he's a very solid quarterback. I'm looking at the weapons around him, and this is perfect time to discuss the news that has come out today that Travis Hunter is taking almost exclusively all his snaps right now in spring practice on the offensive side of the ball, giving Shadir Sanders and that Colorado offense just even more firepower to work from. Yeah, and I'm sure, as we said about a lot of weight's going to be put on Shadir's shoulders, I think a fair amount's going to be on Jackson Hunter or Travis Hunter too, because he's probably going to be playing like as many snaps as anyone in college football. I probably can't wait more, to see how probably that. more than anyone, because frankly, he's probably going to be one of their best wideouts, and he's almost assuredly going to be their best corner. So he's going to be on the field. I'm guessing a ton. I, he'll probably be playing 75 percent of the snaps total. I would guess, and 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 that's just the nature of the game when you're looking at a team that that went one and 11 and yep. hasn't even, and doesn't even have like the brand right now that, that USC had. I mean, USC in fairness was able to pull a lot of big, big transfers out in Colorado, got a lot of transfers, but they didn't quite get the, the star firepower that USC was able to get. I think of some of those guys who came from Oklahoma, Mario yep. Williams, Jordan Addison. I mean, they had some star stars coming Colorado. Again, the two stars were Shador and Travis Hunter. And then they got, some solid pieces from around the power five, but at the end of the day, those two are, are going to be so, so important for this Colorado team and Travis Hunter, even on, on both sides. I would yeah. Imagine. And looking at a couple of the other guys. So Travis Hunter, I'm, I'm excited. I think 75% of the snaps might be high. Cause again, Travis Hunter is not necessarily the biggest cat ever too. Pretty wiry, but is, I mean, probably would be. Are you be. <laughs> Gonna need him on the field a lot because he is gonna be the he's the best player on both sides of the ball. Yeah, he is their best player. But a couple other guys that do want to kind of shout out one Jimmy Horn Jr. for one first player that you're earning your numbers at Colorado in the spring. First player to earn his numbers. This dude's highlights are extremely fun coming from USF. 
He's one of those guys that get the ball in his hands and he's going to do really good things. But he's a little bit small, a little bit undersized. But that's kind of the recipe at the college football level. You get guys who are just good with the football in their hands. You scheme them open. Uh, offense, for as complicated as sometimes it seems, it, get the ball in the playmaker's hands and, and they're going to do good things. And that's kind of why you can be so optimistic about this Colorado team because they have some playmakers. They're not necessarily as deep, and I think that's what we're going to get into when we address the trenches, is like the depth still probably is not there. But from a playmaker standpoint, I think it's there. Another guy I want to shout out, though, Sadeo Trore, the tight end coming from Arkansas State. Not many more productive tight ends um, at the college football level last year. Sadeo Trore, former Canadian, I believe. I mean, really, really good athlete. Probably not going to be an inline blocker, but a phenomenal athlete. And you look at Jimmy Horn Jr., Troy, Travis well, Hunter. Let's be honest. We're not going to be doing – I don't imagine in Colorado they're not going to be doing a ton of like smash mouth run the football because even when you look at that offensive line, that is not a deep unit. It is not a, a unit that's really proven at all because, again, that's another unit that's getting turned around. And, and Sean Lewis never did that at Kent State either. I mean, they were airing the football out a decent amount. And the ball has <laughs> got to be in Shadur's hands. So. <laughs> Yeah, that is that's a really good point. Going back to the recipe, like keep the ball in Shadir Sanders' hands, Jimmy Horn Jr., Travis Hunter. Now, the offensive line is interesting because I'm really kind of intrigued to see how some of these transfers. It's going to be pretty much all transfers, right? You have Landon Beebe coming from the FCS ranks. A lot of Power 5 programs wanted him. Savian Washington coming over from Kent State following Sean Lewis, their OC, I think can be really good. Yusef, um, Yusef Mugrabil coming from Florida. Tyler Brown is an absolute brick house. He's coming from Jackson State. And another interesting topic is Coach Prime was very selective when he was taking the guys from Jackson State to transfer to Colorado. He's not going to take any guys from Jackson State that he doesn't think can play at that Power 5 Pac-12 level. So when you do have those Jackson State guys popping up in the depth chart, you feel pretty confident that they're going to be able to play at that level pretty immediately. Yeah, and again, I, I think they're probably going to need to play that yeah, that, that spread attack, that just feels like the recipe right now. And given, Because you see, I mean, even USC had to do it to an extent because their their offensive line wasn't – it just wasn't quite commensurate with what they had in terms of skill. They had – I mean, yeah. they had a better offensive line probably than what Colorado has because USC wasn't coming from the same depths that, that Colorado is, but they it didn't match up to Mario Williams, Jordan Addison, Caleb Williams, who are all NFL players, and, and similarly, Colorado's got some pros at at, at the skill spots, and I we'll see what they have up front. But but it, I I imagine you're kind of right there. Sean Lewis is going to need to do what he did at Kent State, and they're going to need the balls going to need to be in the air, and it's going to need to come out quickly, which Shador does at least from what you saw at Jackson State. So I think they have. The recipe to be an effective offense, maybe not the most balanced in the world, but yeah. And uh, I just want to shout out a few more names: Kavasi Smoke coming from Kentucky, kind of that bell cow six year dude that's taken a lot of carries. But look out for Dylan Edwards, the the former Notre Dame yeah. commit flips. This dude has absolute Why? burners from what I've been hearing in spring ball. Like it's it's next level, and speed's gonna translate. Like sometimes when you get some recruits in the trenches, like they need to get that grown man strength. If you're the fastest player on the field. That translates whether you're 18 or 22. And Dylan Edwards is going to be one of the fastest players on the field. Very excited to see how Sean Lewis and Coach Prime use that guy, uh, Dylan Edwards as well. Now, flipping over to the defense, this is where I'm a little bit more concerned from the depth. Very similar to USC. Half their defense is coming from the transfer portal. Now, what do you have after that in terms of depth? Because on the defensive side of the ball, you need to have depth. That's where USC got burned and burned bad, especially when you got to the third, fourth quarter especially late in the season where the guys just playing too many snaps did not have the juice left. That's probably where I'm most concerned here, but you do have some big time playmakers here for Colorado on the defensive side of the ball. Well, frankly, what you're going to need to rely on is probably have a guy like Jordan Dominic step up and be a hammer. I mean, when you have like a guy who can rush the passer really effectively, you can cover up for a lot of like weakness and holes because you, you get sacks. That's how you ultimately stop. Stop teams. And That's how USC did it. And I'm not trying to compare Colorado to USC, but USC was horrible at efficiency level of defense. Gave up so many yards. Success per play was like off the charts horrible. Negative plays and turnovers. Through the first 10 weeks, they led the country in turnovers. And when they dried up, they struggled. I would guess Colorado, especially early, 
is going to try to bring a lot of heat. They went to the portal and got a lot of guys on the defense line. Shane Cokes, Leonard Payne, kind of those, those bigger body guys. But Taj Austin was a phenomenal player for West Virginia. Jordan Dominic coming from Arkansas, the SEC level, had what, nine and a half sacks last year? You also have Taylor Upshaw coming from Michigan. Like you have some guys on the defensive line. Again, I'm just not sure if the depth is there. No, and, and, and honestly, it probably won't be, just like it wasn't there for USC and a lot of teams that had to make a quick turnaround. But, again, you can be opportunistic if if uh, Cormani McLean and Travis Hunter can yes. take the football away. That's, that's not a bad recipe for playing really good defense in today's world because there's a lot of teams that give up a lot of yards. But, again, you look at it, if you can create the turnovers and – in negative plays, you typically can be okay even if you're giving up five, 600 yards a game. Yeah, and then I think the strongest unit, at least from the first team, and a unit that I'm excited to see is that linebacker spot because you got two guys who played at one. I mean, Levante Bentley coming from Clemson, Demoy Kennedy coming from Bama, two really good recruits and really good football players, just both on programs that were starting behind some All-American caliber dudes. Levante Bentley obviously behind Trenton Simpson. Um, and some of those other backers at Clemson who are very good. And then Demoy Kennedy, former top 50 player nationally, coming over from Alabama. So if he can put it together, like that linebacker room, and at least from the first team, like you feel pretty good about. But getting to what the strength of this Colorado defense will be, not only this year, but probably in, in the future years, is that secondary. And you know Coach Prime is going to preach what you just said. We are taking the football away and it gets a lot easier when you have a guy like Kermani McLean and Travis Hunter on the outsides because those throwing windows are not going to be very big. I mean, yeah, big, long, athletic guys who, again, should play be the football. on footballs. Yeah, that's what and that's what they're all going to need to do. And it's going to be fun because, like, honestly, you got a lot of guys who can become, like, quickly really popular, really kind of like legends if they can play really good football right off the bat because you – you look, this team is going to be overmatched, and they will be an overpowered At spots, yes. by the bulk of the teams they play. But they do have some real stars, and if those stars can play at that high level, they're going to be, I mean, instant, like the most popular players in the country. If they can go toe-to-toe with Washington, USC, Oregon, these teams that have built up big-time football cultures for a long time and have been dominating, if it, these guys can do it. it's I mean, they're going to be – they're going to be part of one of the coolest turnarounds of all time. Like similar to what those early Miami Hurricanes guys were. They were such big, like larger than life figures in that community because what they were able to do was be, I mean, I mean, take a team from Miami that was nothing, which it's, is frankly what Colorado is coming from and, and make it quickly turn it around with. And, uh, that's it's that. so cool yeah. to see. It's so cool to see just the hype around Colorado athletics in general. Like, they're landing some big time commits in basketball too. Like yeah. a, a program that as outsiders kind of like, you never really think of Colorado as a premier athletic program. Well, not since 20 years ago. Yeah. But what? now they're like, like there's just a ton of hype around just the athletics in general, like the hoops players, they want to come and, and just be around what's happening in Boulder, Colorado. I think that's why we're talking about it so much and reading about so much of this program. Cause it's, it's just very, very intriguing. What I want to talk a little bit about before we take the 2023 or take our eyes to like that 2023 schedule and talk about some expectations is how many players do you think they're going to add in that May portal window? I mean, if guys start coming off the rosters at these big schools, once they know they're not going to start or, or yeah. not the role yep. they want, yep. I still think Colorado should be kind of in the hunt for these guys. And I'm not sure they should take that many more really old I, – it is, I don't know. It, it, to me, I'm not like an expert on roster management, if you will, and I don't know the scholarship situation inside and out. But I imagine there's going to be a fair amount of kids leave Colorado in the – Yeah. And I, and I think that might be a, an okay thing. It sounded like Deion Sanders kind of wants that to be the case a little bit. And and if they can get their hands on big names coming off of – or coming from places that they're not just going to get quite the role or feel they've been overlooked, I think they certainly should be doing it. I, I going back to the offense, I, I still would like to see some more playmakers injected into the offense. And I think that's going to be something Sean Lewis and Coach Prime are taking a look at. It's like you have your quarterback in Shadir Sanders. I mean, it, the offensive line, in terms of like the first team, it actually looks solid. It, the depth might be something you want to address. So maybe they had some guys there. But 
Jimmy Horn Jr. being your wide receiver one, as good as I think he is, I think he wants to, like a little bit more of an X wide receiver and Adam Hopkins and Marion Miller coming in in that freshman class. Do you want to rely so much on those two, like 18 year old kids, to be that playmaker? Because I think you're going to see some wide receivers hit the portal. There are already some still available. I wouldn't be surprised if Colorado looks to address that because getting back to like that recipe, like if you can just put points up on the board and and have a lot of playmakers on the field, you're going to be a competitive team. Regardless if you have the deep offensive line or not, if you have the playmakers that are going to win their one-on-ones outside, if you're going to be able to put up some points. So I think that's the method Colorado is going to go with for that year one. Because when you look at the 2023 schedule, for one, it's extremely hard. And you can sign me up. Like I, I might get a plane ticket to Fort Worth to watch the TCU game September 2nd or – go to Boulder and watch them play Nebraska week two. Cause like those are two phenomenal games, but they're also really, really hard out of conference. So as good as the PAC 12 is this year, them playing TCU on the road and then Nebraska at home. That is a very, very tough schedule Dill, Like year one expectations. I don't think we're the saying they're, they're PAC 12 contenders, although they might be some, a dark horse contender, but what are some realistic year one expectations for coach prime that he can kind of use that as momentum going into year two and year I, two. I mean, and this is no knock on this Colorado program. I, I think if they go six and six, that's a really good year. I, and you just look again at where they're coming from, what late. I mean, they just – they had nothing from last year. They, they overturned the whole program. And, and and at the end of the day, they're playing a downright – like It's a nasty different. schedule. Like it's Colorado not- State, uh, Arizona State has some question marks in Stanford, but like – you look at teams, Oregon, USC, they're both going to be very, very good. UCLA is going to be solid. Oregon State is going to be solid. Arizona is no slouch in the pack. They played good football last year. I mean, like, these are all good. Like, there's no real, like, cakewalks for the most the part. 12 after dark is going to be so lit this year. Like, uh, it's been, it was, like, two years ago. It was just so bad. And, like, the East Coast boys that we are, you get so pumped for, like, a nice 10 o'clock Pac-12 after dark and game. News and it was like Washington running the I formation playing Arizona. And you're just like, this is, this is horrible. This year, the PAC 12 might be the most exciting conference in football. I cannot wait for the PAC 12 after dark events. And I can't wait for the Colorado spring game. I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of leaning six and six. You show this program is that would be a massive turnaround. You show this program is going in the right direction. I think the, how competitive these games are, are too. Cause like, yeah, even that, cause even if you like only win four games or something, but you show you're in it and, and they're yeah. in it with all these teams and maybe it comes to the wire, they just got to look the part. Cause like last year you'd watch like the games would be over in the first. And half. it's more just in terms of recruiting. Like if you're going to convince these players who are top hundred, top 50 players nationally, who are taking a look at Colorado, you got to convince them that you're going to be competitive. You're a program that within three or four years, you can win a Pac-12 championship. You can win and compete for a national championship. If you go six and six, like that's really strong evidence that this ship is moving in the right direction. And as far as recruiting goes and attracting more talent to Boulder, I think that plays a massive role. Look for Shadir Sanders to have a massive year, get some just massive hype around this program. I think you could really see this Colorado program absolutely take off. That's where we're leaving it here. We'll be back April 22nd to break down the spring game. I cannot wait. Sold out ESPN. I believe Robert Griffin is on the call. Fire me up for that one. Appreciate all you guys checking us out. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.